Yeah. Uh, well, unfortunately, it looks that the pandemic will take longer than expected with social and economic impacts, which we may not even imagine right now still. Um, Don, I would like to start with you. Uh, what should or what can the innovators do in the fight against COVID-19? So what do you think? What else can be done? Well, there's, there are really several categories for those who find their core competency can be applied in this new domain, right? And I think you've heard that theme by all of our presenters. They recognize they have a certain core competency and in the, the difficulty for many small businesses, they translate that to a product or a service and then they get tunnel vision, which typically a startup should have. But when those um, uh, markets become blocked for some reason, then your tunnel vision has you drive into a wall right, and you crash. So it's really important to think a little more broadly about what your core competency is and then see if it can morph or pivot to another application. So we have the broad area of personal protective gear. There was a huge crisis of need. It abated somewhat, but I think it's coming back and we're seeing that as uh, uh, face masks or, or various forms of facial protection, I saw a clever thing that I think uh, uh, an individual invented that was a face mask that actually strapped around the chin and the forehead so that teachers, could, their, their lips could be seen. And it was done by a deaf person who needed to see lips, but also of use for teachers so that their articulation could be seen by their students. So there's gonna be an ongoing need until there is a vaccine for, for various forms of protective device and protective technology, whether it's individual protection or it's atmospheric environmental cleanup, various things that deal with creating uh, ant, uh, antiseptic environments are gonna be very important. There is a, a clear need in the um, IT space right? for all tools that we can muster uh, and all of the intelligence, artificial or otherwise, that we can muster to understand how to track and mitigate the spread. And so again, until there is a, a cure and a vaccine, then the most important thing is to stop the outbreak from spreading once it's been identified. And I've seen a number of very clever approaches that people have used that combine, again, the, the IT element of device tracking and individual tracking, but also atmospheric modeling and environmental modeling to complement the human trafficking, if you will, or human transmission to also uh, understand how it uh, propagates in the environment. All very important and useful tools so that we throw everything that we have up against uh, obstacles to prevent this from continuing. There is the actual development of cures, clearly many contenders out there, no shortage of, of need for continued in innovation, not just in the biologic space, but then in the manufacturing space for the biologics, right? To be able to do things quickly and at scale is going to be a very paramount important. Uh, and and in, in deference to our, our good friends at Vervi, training, right? Because every time you introduce a new technology, you need to teach people how to use it. And, and, and manuals are not necessarily the most efficient way to learn nor are lectures, sorry, Professor Don, but lecturing is not necessarily the best way to learn either, right? Most people learn first in the concrete world of doing, feeling, touching, experiencing, and then they can generalize into abstractions and more from there. So I think those are all domains that are open to a wide variety of companies that are in other businesses. And, and, and then the ancillary elements of communicating that, uh, marketing that, all those things that you would do for any company all become ways in which you can start to assemble uh, I call them intellectual supply chains, idea supply chains, where we bring together small companies that put these pieces together to bring solutions to the marketplace. I think that, those are the opportunities that are out there. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much. Thomas, what would you say? I mean, what, what can the European innovators do, or maybe internationally, so in the fight against COVID-19, to tackle the challenges maybe more quickly, faster, until the cure arrives? and when vaccine is found? Yes, there's definitely some um, startups who can play a role in, um, in these questions. I'm not uh, a big fan of everyone now trying to, to jump into this and uh, trying to contribute. I think it creates a lot of noise and also distraction um, for those working on the, on the challenges. And if you bring them 
another great idea and pack it in a in a very nice pitch you're not ne necessarily helping but you're you're also creating a lot of distraction so it is not advisable in my point of view if you don't have anything that is um, an innovative solution in this field don't uh, package it like one and don't try to, to go in this direction i so um I think that's what was also one learning we had with these many hackathons that were organized around uh, around the world where a lot of ideas were played around with and brainstormed but in the end um, these were not uh, solutions that that were um, that were uh, suitable to solve any of the problems so i i think there is not um, it, it's too much to ask for the startup scene to quickly come up with any solutions real solutions for um, the um, for the pandemic. Of course, there is some teams that have been working for years on um, on solutions that can be helpful now, and these should receive the funding and the support that they need now. Um, so, so these definitely exist, and, and I think we've heard some examples here today as well. Um, for the for the other startups, I think. Um, it is important that they stay on track and survive because if we are um, if we are honest, um, we need to have like a functioning startup scene to have prosperity and e economic growth also in the future. And um, these startups serve that purpose mainly that they create jobs and that they create opportunities um, for um, for now and, the, and and when the pandemic is gone because. Um, definitely, we need to have an industry base also in the future. So their main job is to survive and not to, to try to solve the pandemic. Absolutely, main job should be to survive, but maybe some startups, some tech enterprises have the capacity to think about also about the future pandemics and they may come up with solutions which could help also in the future. I mean, it's not only the um, uh, the health tech, right? So with a data-driven innovation, I think really new great products can be developed uh, so that the whole world uh, doesn't have to be so fragile like we have been during the last uh, six, seven months, I would say. How about you guys, our entrepreneurs? Johannes, would you like to add something? What can be done from your perspective or in general? Yeah, my, my first uh, thing is, it's easy to say, um, please survive, <laughs> because it's, um, if you are a startup and if you are in this um, situation, and I was some years ago in the situation where we say, okay, we, we have to survive, now we have to fire all the people and something like that. So it was a very hard situation. Um, at the moment, we are in a, like I said, in a lucky uh, situation. So it's a little bit perhaps unfair for all other startups. And we are in the, let's say in the right area, in the medical area. But if you're, I don't know, a traveling startup or something like that, which is, I would say the, the most uh, dangerous and most um, stressful area at the moment, um, even if, if the big companies are uh, struggling there, um it, yeah like i said it's um and here this is where i said okay here it makes sense to find out if you have something what you can use and i completely agree with thomas that you don't and that's what i wanted to say before um you don't if you're a hardware company you don't have to be an ai company uh, company or uh virtual re reality or something like that this will not work if you're completely changing your um, your, let's call it focus, um, but um, you 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 have to adapt if it makes sense, um, and only if it makes sense, then it um, then it will work. Um, and on the other side, of course, in let's say end of uh, twenty one uh, year twenty one, um, hopefully the pandemic is over, and then we will. Uh, even the traveling startups or something like that will also be, uh, will rise again because everybody will start to travel and they will start to travel a lot because they were not able to travel the whole uh, 
let's say two years or something like that. But it's really hard to, 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 to try to survive if you don't get any money, if you don't get, you have your employees, you have to pay them, you have to pay your own flat or your house or something like that. Um, and then of course you have to find a way, um, you have to find a way out. With the tech companies, I would say, and even with the deep tech, or um, it's a little bit easier because there are a lot of investors who are investing um, money with five years, seven years, 10 years, or something like that, where it's a real technology. And then it makes sense to focus on this technology. And this is something what we did in the past. We were always focusing on the technology and always trying to get a better um, algorithms to get better hardware, good, something like that. And at the end, of course, the, uh, at the end, it was really, it was really good, but there were so many people who to, to told us, yeah, it doesn't make sense. Please fire all your engineers, only uh, focus on uh, making money and something like that. And we said, okay, uh, that's not our way, uh, what we think. And it's, it's, of course, it's a hard way, but at the end, it, I think it's the better way because at the end, the technology will win and not only if you have there a, a small high peak or something like that, which is um, at the moment fine, but at the end, it's not, um, yeah, everybody will see that the technology will not work. That's why we were focusing on the technology. Um, if it, it's the right way, I don't know. I would say yes, but um, yeah, we will see. Um, so that's what, what I would say. If, if you have the possibility to focus on your technology, do it because it makes sense. Um, if, you're, if you have to make money because you need the revenue and something like that, and if it's and if you have to adapt it to different markets and something like that, I guess it will be more challenging at the moment, but we will see, yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you, Johannes. Thank you. Juan, how about yeah. you? Do you have any ideas? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just talk about, I mean, I, don't, I, don't, I know Johannes and, and Thomas, you know, uh, with us, we, we are fortunate and unfortunate to start right at the pandemic. So I'll talk about surviving because we actually started right when it hit. So I would say um, uh, try to take time to meditate and think about how to efficiently run your company and your idea. Don't get distracted by like, I think you're hearing this over and over, like chasing COVID. If your product uh, and your roadmap was a good plan that you had, uh, the market will dictate and come to you. So, you know, we're fortunate to be working with NGI, uh, the talent that we're bringing on board all remotely. So what I would focus on for a young startup now is learn to try to reach out to your employees, have those stand up meetings, try to listen to them, uh, talk to them one on one, try to have these we have these game nights on Fridays where we all you know, drink some beers and we play games together as a company. All these tools help you survive because you're missing that contact of, you know, one of the things that I miss on my previous startup was when I would walk by an engineer or a developer's desk and they were working on something and then coming at the end of the night or later in the day and it being much better or they finally fixed the bug or uh, look at the new thing that we just took all week and you're missing that now. Um, so try to replicate that as much as possible. Um, you know, like I said, I, I'm, it gets kind of lonely, especially as, as founders and your co-founders and your executives are all spread all over the United States. And uh, we have some people working in Portugal, for example, and we talk to them and we're like, hey, so how is it going to be here in the future? Because, you know, the EU is a little bit ahead of us where it's either flattened and they're already dealing on a post-COVID world, right? Like restaurants, social distancing, and you know, United States is a little bit wacky with some of our areas not listening, but we know that there is a light at the end of the tunnel and uh, we just have to try to uh, listen to everyone and try to survive this together by you know using the tools available for communication. Yeah, yeah, thank you. 
Oh, uh, well, I would also like to add something. We just launched recently in July Joint Innovation Network uh, in data-driven innovation for the fight against COVID-19. And I'm really uh, very honored and happy to be able to work with you, Dan. So you're our regional coordinator. So our purpose is uh, bringing together the innovators from uh, Germany and also the USA and uh, having the capacity, of course, not just asking the companies to do completely something else like Johannes mentioned, but if they have the uh, skills and competence in data driven innovation. So with joint forces, uh, I believe uh, we can tackle the challenges faster. So with different perspectives from different countries.